Hello, everyone. Uh, you heard a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Ujwal. Uh, I am uh, working on TC39 uh, as a, one of the co-chairs with Rob and uh, our colleague Chris. And I'm here to set the stage for the rest of the presentations because do you even know what TC39 is? I mean, it's not the most descriptive name, uh, but let's make this fun. So by a quick show of hands, how many of you know that TC39 exists? Or, okay, that's a few of you. And do you know how it works? Or, okay, so that's nobody. So I, I hope I can be of some help here. I'll try not to take all of your time, and this can be pretty dry stuff, so I'll try to be not very boring about it, but uh, please feel free to ask me anything for the rest of the day. So moving on, let's talk about the most important thing first. Uh, here's me trying to read the first version of the spec. Uh, I'm Ujwal. I am known by my nickname on the internet. I'm from New Delhi in India, and I live in Corunia in Galicia. And I am uh, sort of I've been working on open source software for a very long time. I believe the web is one of the most important things, and, and I'm really glad that all of you are here to preserve it. Uh, and yeah, just a bunch of stuff about me. But do any of you know about Egalia? No. A few of you, thank you. Uh, but yeah, you could see. <laughs> I work at Egalia, but what even is Egalia? Uh, Egalia is a consultancy that works on open source software and standards. Uh, we are working on cooperative and we have been working across different open source projects, uh, including some of your favorites. Uh, I specifically work on the compilers team where we design programming languages and runtimes uh, and what's a better language to design than JavaScript. This fun fact, uh, I don't know if any of you knew, but Egalia has a special history with this city. Uh, we used to work quite extensively back in the day with Nokia on Mimo, and this is a photo for Helsinki office. Uh, but okay, let's get to the point. What even is TC39? And I would say, okay, TC39 is a standards body, but what even is a standards body? Have you even ever come across one, or, or have you used the work of any of the standard bodies? I would say probably yes, because there's a few of them. Uh, ECMA is the organization that we work with, but you might have used something by Unicode, for example. Uh, pretty important stuff. Or ISO, or W3C, and Wattpack. So there's all of these different bodies that are mainly in the business of bringing together disparate groups of people and helping them reach standardization and unification. And it helps us all because once something is available to everyone, it's part of the commons, you can build on top of that rather than alongside it. So TC39 specifically is the 39th TC, Technical Committee of ECMA, uh, and specifically it works on what we call the JavaScript programming language, or more specifically ECMA script, but you know. Uh, who participates in TC39? You might be able to guess some of them. So there's obviously implementations from different browser teams, but also massive companies that are responsible for maintaining huge JavaScript code bases. Everyone who has some stake in the future of this programming language that we all collectively probably not despise. But the point is that there's so many groups like uh, academics, like the open source projects, like the OpenJS Foundation, who also form an important part of our process. And we'll get to what it is later, but uh, even beyond this initial set of participants, uh, there's subject matter experts, there's people who represent different communities and projects, as well as people who just contribute to TC39. Everyone is important to the work we achieve in the end. Uh, before we go on with the rest of the presentation, I can quickly go over some of the terms that we're gonna use, not just in this presentation, but uh, moving forwards in the other talks. So ECMA, as we talked about, is the standards organization where we work. It doesn't stand for anything. ECMA is not an acronym, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it used to stand for something, fun fact. ECMA 262 is the standard that we write. It, it specifies the entire JavaScript programming language as well as its standard library. 
uh, oh, I should be checking these off. And there's more standards like it, but this is the one that you're probably most interested in. Uh, then ECMAScript, that's JavaScript. It's a collection of different standards, including ECMA 262, uh, put together in a runtime. Then there's different task groups that we'll get a bit into later, but there's different task groups. So ECMA, rather than doing everything at the central level, sometimes delegates things to specialized groups of people. And then there's the technical committees, like TC39, but also TC53. OK, so now that we've got that out of the way, how does TC39 even work, right? The most important thing that I'd like you to take from this presentation, if anything, is that ECMA works on a consensus-based model. This means that there's no voting, that nobody is enforcing anything. Please don't talk about that. Uh, but most importantly, ECMA works because we all need it to work. The web platform, as it is, is already very fragmented, and, and if we didn't work together, nothing would get done. So there's a lot of people from diverse backgrounds in the committee. Uh, these may include people who implement JavaScript or people who are purely interested in, in it from an academic point of view, and everybody in between. Then there's uh, you know the process where everything is done through consensus, as I said, and there may be objections or concerns, and you have to satisfy each and every single one of them. Now, that sounds <laughs> very chaotic, but and it is, but it is very important. It is important because all of this works because of the social contract, because of the fact that we have to make the programming language work for everyone, the web platform for everyone. So when it actually comes to doing our work, there's four different stages of maturity for the proposals. We'll, we'll get into that later. And any proposal, which is any change that you propose in the language, goes through these different stages throughout its life cycle. And it receives different kinds of feedback at different stages and so on. So talking about the task groups that we discussed earlier, TC39 has a few task groups. So first we have TG1 for dealing with the entire specification, the programming language standard. Then we have TG2, which is uh, something that I work on and Shane works on that you'll hear from him. Uh, and it is mainly tasked with internationalization. So all the internationalization APIs and efforts that you see, not only in JavaScript, but in the web, uh, has something to do with the folks in TG2. Then there's TG3 that works on security, especially when it comes to running JavaScript in stricter environments. Uh, and then there's TG4 and TG5. These are new task groups, uh, relatively new. And TG4 is in the process of standardizing source maps, which is one of the most interesting things uh, we're doing. Uh, and TG5 is a research effort to work on language standardization to find out how does a programming language standard, which, I mean, it's pretty dry. It's very boring. How do we communicate with you? Because the standard is only as effective as, as how it relates to the people who use it. So I, I think that's going to be a very interesting group moving forwards, talking about where our work gets done. All of it's pretty much on GitHub. Uh, apart from a few meetings here and there, pretty much everything we do reflects back on GitHub. and. The easiest way to get involved in most cases is to just start bothering people on GitHub, uh, file some issues, make some changes, and you're in. There's also the spec itself. You can read it. You can try to make any changes to it. And we try to meet each other a few times a year to, to stay in track, I guess, essentially. So there's the six plenary meetings every year. That's the kind of meeting that we're here uh, for. Thank you, by the way, for hosting us. Uh, or some online meetings. Uh, and then there's smaller, more focused meetings. These meetings can be more regular. They can be uh, s smaller, more focused groups. But the important point is that most of the work that is done is not particularly done in the meetings per se, but rather on GitHub, and the meeting is just a place for people to talk things through, for the most part.
talking about the stage process. I, I hope you were excited for this one. Uh, everything starts at stage zero. Don't ask me why, it has to, <laughs> I guess. Uh, at this stage, everything is a rough idea. It could be something you wrote down on a napkin or, uh, I don't know, something you just hallucinated or a file in a repository somewhere. Uh, but everything starts at stage zero. At this point, we call it a straw person proposal. And it starts getting fleshed out. So in order to kick things off, you need to first get it adopted by the committee to begin with, right? Like to, for people to recognize that this is an interesting direction to even start considering working in. There's a lot of state zero proposals, by the way. If you're interested in any of them, you should probably let it known so people prioritize them uh, sufficiently. But um, beyond that, things start getting serious. So at stage one, okay, you had an idea and it was accepted by the committee. It was not accepted by the committee in that this is exactly what we're going to do, but in that this is an interesting problem space to explore. So stage one means that now we can start the actual process of, well, uh, discussing the different things, the, the syntax, the uh, uh, different facets of this proposal and see how it's going to work, if at all. So here we start getting close to the shape of a solution. We have a champion, and I know that sounds like <laughs> very rough, but this just means there is a person who is assigned to uh, communicate between the authors of the proposal as well as the committee. And yeah, this is the time where you can have massive changes, massive rethinking of the proposals, and people start playing with demos and polyfills, and it's one of the fun stages. Signals, for example, a quick show of hands. Any fans of Signal here? Okay, wow, uh, that's very promising. Uh, but st Signals is a stage one proposal at the moment. It's something that we've been discussing very frequently and hope to sort of design in a way that reflects the actual usage. Uh, I'll skip the examples because, I don't know, that's not a great use of time, I guess. But Decimal is a stage one proposal as well. I, I don't know if you're excited by it, but I am. Uh, the point is that all of these proposals, if you notice, try to address some deficiency of the language uh, and, and try to address it in a way that works for the large sort of uh, group of stakeholders, which can be quite intimidating. But decimal, fun. Uh, there's a lot other stage one proposals that are in the works. Uh, type annotations, for example, you might be interested in, but uh, the point is that there's all these different stages at which different things are, and, and they slowly evolve. Stage two is when things start getting serious. So here we start describing in, in very clear words, syntactic and semantic details. We are writing down formal spec text here. So, so things are getting settled. This is, in my opinion, one of the stages at which most of the work gets done because it is open enough in that a lot of things are, are moving parts. They are, they are being fleshed out while it is, it is open-ended enough uh, and serious enough that uh, you know you have to write the spec text, for instance, and and people are starting to think not in terms of like what a solution could look like, but what the solution would look like. So uh, this is, uh, a, as the slide says, it's almost the stage at which TC39 expects that a feature would be developed in the future. But things are still quite experimental because they are not settled entirely. Deferred evaluation is, uh, spoiler alert, it's, it used to be stage two until the beginning of this week. Uh, but uh, you might recognize this as something you'd like to do. Basically, it allows you to add a modifier next to the import to change uh, the way your import works and allows it to lazily evaluate things. And which stage did that move to? It moved to stage 2.7. The new stage is stage 2.7. Don't ask me why we named it like that, but it is not confusing at all. Uh, but why stage 2.7, right? Because it's closer to three than to two. It is a stage which we recently introduced. And why? Because there's a, a bit of a disconnect between the way we did things. Uh, 
at stage three, we basically expect everything to start getting implemented, to start being used at some scale as well. But at the same time, this is uh, before there's any test written. So there's a little bit of a period between the, the proposal getting to stage three and the proposal actually being implemented where there's no test. And how do you implement something when there's no test? It's, it's kind of a chicken and egg problem, and we solved it by introducing this new stage. So now you have the 2.7 stage, which is exclusively for writing tests and sort of iterating on, on that end. And then you go to stage three, and it has the regular implications of stage three, that it starts getting implemented in browsers and so on. Still don't use things, though. So <laughs> this is the stage 2.7 that we were talking about. Uh, the tests, now that I mentioned them, uh, are very important. Uh, JavaScript is a very complex programming language. and uh, to write appropriate testing for it is, is one of the most challenging things. Uh, but we have a conformance test suite. It's called Test262. And it's one of the, if not the, best places to get started and, and get involved. And it's really fun. I would really recommend getting involved if you'd like to. Talking about stage 2.7 proposals, there's Shadow Realms. Now, that is a very complicated proposal that would probably merit its own uh, presentation, but it's a fun feature. Uh, check it out. And it's being tested right now. And then there's math, some precise. It, it was just that easy. Thank you. Uh, but moving on to the more serious stuff, now we get to stage three. And stage three is pretty massive. It's a, a pretty important signal. And it, the signal is, Let's start doing this. Let's start implementing this. And th at this stage, we are stopping to sort of deal with the weirdly metaphysical issues of how to design something and start getting into how is it being implemented? How is it being used? What is, for example, the, the amount of uh, you know, extra megabytes that you'd have to ship and so on? So browsers start implementing things. They start shipping things behind the flag so that people don't depend on something just yet. And uh, this is usually the stage at which you get the most hype, you, you get to hear about things and try them out. Temporal is stage three. Uh, fans of Temporal here? Uh, OK, not enough. but <laughs> it's, it's a very good proposal. Check it out. Uh, but that's stage three, and it should hopefully be arriving to your JS one time soon. And then there's stage four. So stage four is when we finally conclude working on something. We decide that we have had all the time we needed to, to uh, sort of test this proposal. And we have decided that it's a positive feature in the language. It's added to the spec. And it's made part of the next release. Array buffer transfer is a very cool stage four uh, proposal. Please check it out. There's also set methods that allows you to have all of these interesting methods on sets. Uh, if you're a fan of set theory, then you might be missing them. And now they're here. So there's a lot of stage four uh, proposals. We keep adding new ones as, as we can. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of the success case of standardization. This Everything that ends up here is you know not only added to the language, but has gone through all of this process to make sure that it's done responsibly. And later this month, we're going to publish ECMAScript 2024. I don't know if you care, or you actually just use the ES Next in whatever tool that you use. Uh, but we make yearly uh, releases of the uh, spec, and there's going to be one later this month. But before I uh, go on, I, I would like to say there's so many interesting ways to get involved. And we'd love to have you on board. I think the committee could always use more fresh perspectives. And it could always use more hands. So uh, I, I implore you to work with us and, and just ask uh, important questions. I think there's a lot of value in that. But yeah, I hope you feel more empowered to just go in and start yelling <laughs> than um, you were in the beginning of this presentation. But thank you.